The Liberal Party alone can be trusted to maintain free trade. It is a policy founded on modern facts. Great Britain itself is too small to support the population which lives within this island. We cannot possibly produce the food which and we must buy most of our foodstuffs from abroad. These can only be paid for by exporting our manufactured goods or by rendering other services to other nations. It is vitally necessary that we should be able to import as freely as possible. This indeed is the answer to those people who ask why we, alone of all the countries in the world, are free traders. It is because our situation is different to that of others. Safeguarding is the latest form of attack on free trade. Mr. Amory wrote five years ago that the policy was the same as protection, though it meant a slower rate of legislation. What then is the object of protection? Lord Balfour told us in 1904, a protective policy aims at supporting or creating home industries by raising home prices. If industry is encouraged, it is, said Lord Balfour, by raising prices. The result then of protection or safeguarding must be a rise in the cost of living. I can think of few things so likely to create discontent in this country as a rise in the cost of living. Protectionist tariffs, moreover, affect not only the trades to which they are applied, but many others as well. The Conservative Party will not put a tariff on wheat. But what is the baker to do if he finds the cost of the motor in which he distributes his loaves of the petrol with which he drives his motor, of the articles he may need to turn the wheat into flour and the flour into bread go up and up and up. Of course, if the things he uses cost him more, he must raise his prices to his customers and the cost of the loaf will go up too. And protection also affects wages. Safeguarders never tire of telling us that we must prevent the import of cheap foreign-made goods. They are made by sweated labour in protected countries. Who can expect the British working man with his higher wages to adopt a system which produces sweated wages elsewhere? So also with employment. Unemployment is never so low as when imports are high. That is the lesson of all the figures. For the general benefit, we must insist upon continuing that free trade policy which has proved in wages, in employment, and in the cost of living of the greatest advantage to this country and especially to those who live upon the smallest margin of security.